reggae just extra with Ross Dennis. It wasn't a joke when a veteran reggae singer Horace Andy took an opportunity to vent his anger against the late Edward Bunny striker Lee Sr. and the British reggae label Trojan Records, who he berated for 40 years of allegedly unpaid royalties during the JRIA Awards ceremony in Kingston on Easter Monday, 2023, where he was presented with the Icon Award. My name is Ras Dennis, and I welcome you to another video by Reggae Just Extra. On today's episode, we shall be using Horace Andy as a case study to reiterate the need for the major stakeholders in the reggae music fraternity to implement a pension plan for aging artists and musicians. Veteran singer Josie Mel in his opinion said, the time for action is now. A lot of major veteran artists are reaching an age where they need more support. They were the ones who toured and championed reggae all over the world, and there should be a plan to help take care of them so they can age gracefully. If you are watching this channel for the very first time, please consider clicking on the subscription button below, like, and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. In his address, Andy reminisced on his early days in the music industry before segueing into his thoughts on two of Jamaica's foremost music producers, the late Clement Sir Coxon Dodd, who he praised, and the late Edward Bunny Striker Lee Sr. and the British reggae label Trojan Records, who he berated for 40 years of allegedly unpaid royalties. Me and Dennis and Freddie McGregor, Freddie McGregor, Al Campbell, Messina, and Lara Marshall. But we used to <laughs> we used to drink sugar and water out of the butter pan and eat bullet. Them thing they would sing and go uh, eat and go sing. We used to pray for your arm and drop off of the almond tree. Enough people don't know. But we give thanks. It's the last year in the world. Mr. Dad, although them say is not the best, him is the best kind PME. Of for real. You know? Bunny Lee are the wickedest. Man children, man children, them, them don't pay well for 40 years. For 40 years, I don't get nothing in this business. I give thanks. You know? This is the second time in 12 months that Horace Andy has berated Bunny Lee and Trojan, while at the same time speaking glowingly of Sir Cox One. Andy, whose given name is Horace Hines, told the Guardian newspapers that Dodd, who produced his biggest hit Skylarking in 1971, had handpicked him, given him his stage name, and accepted him into Studio One, which he described as my school, my college, my university where he learned everything. During the interview, it was observed that whenever Bunny Striker Lee is mentioned, Horace had responded sharply and harshly. Bunny Lee not a producer but a financier. And he never paid me. Not a penny. And he sell all my recordings to Trojan Records in England and I never see a royalty statement after all these years, yet they issue my songs on CD and vinyl and in boxes, he had claimed. Co-founded in 1967 by Jamaican Lee Gopthal and Island Records' Chris Blackwell, Trojan Records was responsible for marketing and distributing some of the biggest reggae and ska songs in the United Kingdom. In addition to Skylarking, these included Dave Barker and Ansel Collins' Double Barrel, Ken Booth's Everything I Own, Desmond Decker and the Aces' Israelites, Jimmy Cliff's Wonderful World and Beautiful People, and Tony Tribe's Red Red Wine, among many others. According to The Guardian, Trojan Records, after being sold on several times since its founder Lee Gopthal went bankrupt in 1975, is now owned by BMG and thus part of the world's fourth largest record label. However, a BMG representative had noted that while it's true that Bunny Lee struck an agreement for various recordings featuring Horace Andy with Trojan back in the 1970s, these have long expired and rights reverted to Bunny. According to BMG, none of those recordings have appeared on Trojan during BMG's tenure, though a Best of compilation was in fact released via BMG in 2016. The company points him towards the executors of Bunny Lee's estate, but says it will also contact Andy to clarify these issues. It should be noted that Horace Andy's case is not different from that of Leroy Horsemouth Wallace. If you haven't watched Horsemouth's episode, please do so after this video. Horace Andy, who was born Horace Hines on February 19, 
1951 is known for his distinctive vocals and hit songs such as Skylarking, Government Land, as well as Angel, Spying Glass, and Five Man Army with English trip hop group Massive Attack. He is also famous for a cover version of Ain't No Sunshine. Andy is often described as one of the most respected and influential singers in Jamaica. He recorded his first single, This Is A Black Man's Country, in 1967 for producer Phil Pratt. This Is A Black Man's Country failed to make an impact, and it wouldn't be until 1970 that he achieved a breakthrough. After unsuccessfully auditioning at Coxon Dodge Studio One as a duo along with Frank Melody, he successfully auditioned on his own a few days later. Dodd decided Hines should record as Horace Andy, partly to capitalize on the popularity of Bob Andy, and partly to avoid comparisons with his cousin, Justin Hines, with whom his singing style at the time showed a resemblance. Got to be sure, the song he had auditioned with became his first release for Studio One. The following two years saw the release of further singles such as See a Man's Face, Night Owl, Fever, and Mr. Bassey. One of Andy's most enduring songs, Skylarking, first appeared on Dodd's Jamaica Today compilation album, but after proving a sound system success, it was released as a single, going on to top the Jamaican chart. Skylarking was a rebuke of the youths loitering on the corner, hands outstretched begging for money. The song was also covered by the late Garnet Silk in 1993. The original version of Skylarking was recorded at Studio One in 1974 and, according to Andy in a Gleaner interview, was based on observation where many of the youths were looking for handouts, a practice he said he used to participate in as a teenager before going to Ethiopian World Federation meetings at 17 years old. Skylarking was not released as a single at the outset, but after being included on Dodd's Jamaica Today album, it became a sound system favorite, which resulted in it being released as a single. The next few years saw Andy regularly in the reggae charts with further singles for Dodd such as Something On My Mind, Love Of A Woman, Just Say Who, and Every Tongue Shall Tell, as well as singles for other producers such as Lonely Woman, for Derek Harriet, Girl I Love You, Ernest and Joseph Ukim, Love You To Want Me and Delilah, Gussie Clark, and Get Wise, Feel Good, and Money Money for Phil Pratt. Andy had a second Jamaican number one single in 1973 with Children of Israel. Andy's most successful association with a producer, however, was with Bunny Lee in the middle part of the 1970s. This era produced a series of singles now regarded as classics such as a re-recorded Skylarking, Just Say Who, Don't Try to Use Me, You Are My Angel, Zion Gate, I've Got to Get Away, and a new version of Something on My Mind. In May 2004, Sir Coxone died of an apparent heart attack at the age of 74 at his home in Kingston, while Bunny Lee died in October 2020 after suffering heart failure. He was 79 at the time of his passing. In 2019, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports, Honorable Olivia Babsey Grange, has announced plans by her ministry to establish an insurance fund for performing artists and musicians. Minister Grange advised at the time that proposals include coverage for life, health, maternity, and pension plans. Noting that there is currently a working insurance fund for athletes, Minister Grange shared that the initiative for entertainers will be undertaken in partnership with key stakeholders from the Jamaica Reggae Industry Association, JARIA, Jamaica Federation of Musicians, JFM, and the Jamaica Association of Vintage Artists Affiliates, JAVA. But Frankie Campbell, chairman of the Jamaica Association of Vintage Artists and Affiliates, JAVA, was responded that it will never happen. He stressed that there is no basic salary in music, our income and labor is seasonal. It's not consistent, even the big boys in our industry tour over the summer, and most shows are between April to September, so that's when the artist's support team, the engineers, backup singers, and musicians really earn. So only perhaps workers on the North Coast could conceivably contribute towards a pension plan because they earn salaries, but otherwise, a pension plan for the industry is unworkable. 
Frankie Campbell revealed that Java's 150 strong membership has a life insurance policy that serves its membership, often subsiding premiums for financially challenged members to ensure that family members can benefit in the event of death. According to Josie Mel, who believes more should be done. It's very embarrassing after artists work so hard throughout their lifetime then turn around to be subjected to suffering. It doesn't look good. The top players in the Jamaica music industry and the Jamaican government should have that set up long time just like it's set for any other workers so when artists gets old they have some income to live on. Or if there is no pension, set up a compassionate fund to aid them in times of need, Josie Mel said. Thank you for watching this episode and do leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. However until we meet again, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. Much effort is made to ensure all materials and reggae gist extras videos fall within the guidelines of fair use. No copyright infringement is intended. If you are or represent the copyright owner of any materials accidentally used in this video and have an issue with its use, please contact me, rasdennisinfo at gmail.com and I will respond as soon as possible. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis. Just